Asahi Koromine, a high school boy who has trouble keeping a secret from anyone, has a crush on his cool and reserved classmate, Yoko. While he worries about getting rejected in a similar manner to his confession of love with class president Nagisa Aizawa, his classmates encourage him to try again. Upon reaching the classroom to confess to Yoko, he finds her unfurling a large pair of wings from her back. Yoko admits to Asahi that she is a vampire, but could only come to school if she hid her true identity from everyone. Asahi swears that he'll be her friend and keep her secret safe. Meanwhile, newspaper club head Mikan Akami plans to see how Asahi's confession went, and Nagisa appears to be spying on Asahi from a distance. Asahi tells his friends that he decided to just be friends with Yoko for now. Meanwhile, Nagisa reflects on how she brutally rejected Asahi in the previous summer to prevent him from getting too close to her, but now acts jealous after seeing him with Yoko. Later, Yoko eats her lunch with Asahi in an otherwise empty classroom and finds some cream puffs that Nagisa left on his desk. But the puff is too spicy for her to eat. She inevitably reveals her wings as Nagisa steps into the room, but Nagisa in turn accidentally reveals himself to be a tiny alien, stepping out of her human-sized external unit, while holding a tiny ray gun at Yoko. While worrying about her own secret identity getting out, Nagisa chases after Asahi with a hammer she refers to as a memory erasure apparatus, but Yoko saves Asahi from getting hit by it. In the end, the three decide to keep each other's secrets safe. While Mikan is shown digging a listening device out of an uneaten cream puff, Mikan tortures Asahi and his friends for more information about Asahi's meeting in the classroom with Yoko, but he refuses to tell her anything, fearing she would spread the information around the school like she did in the past. Later, Asahi's teacher asks him to deliver homework to Yoko, as she's sick and can't come to school. Mikan decides to follow him, but Nagisa appears to help him off her trail. Asahi decides to stop for a brief visit at Yoko's student's apartment, but gets a call from Nagisa that Mikan managed to get past her and run to Yoko's house. Mikan is accidentally knocked unconscious after being buried under a pile of Yoko's junk from the closet, but decides to photoshop a romantic encounter between Asahi and Yoko and threatens to display it throughout the school. Asahi confronts Mikan on the rooftop and begs her not to do it, but the pleading only makes her stronger. So Asahi takes the opposite route and decides to let her put up the pictures, draining her resolve as she didn't want him to feel happy. After school, a spirit residing in Mikan's glasses assumes that she secretly has feelings for Asahi, but Mikan angrily denies this as she twists her own glasses around. Nagisa begs Asahi for her help as her external unit ran out of battery power before it could recharge and she was forced to come to him in her Lilliputian form. Asahi sneaks into the girl's bathroom and carries Nagisa's body down to the nurse's office with Yoko's help. However, on their way out, Mikan stumbles upon the tiny form of the real Nagisa, so Asahi tries to play her off as a lifelike figurine. Unfortunately, this only excites Mikan and Shimada, who arrives later, while Nagisa has trouble maintaining a doll-like composure, forcing Asahi to snatch Nagisa back and hide from his friends. After taking shelter in a gym storage shed, Nagisa mysteriously grows to human size and gets embarrassed about revealing her antenna to Asahi, while Mikan, Shimada, and Yoko all hunt them down. Asahi decides to have the human-sized Nagisa punch him out of the shed and escape, pretending to be angry. A mysterious horned lady magically returns Nagisa to her normal size, while Asahi and Yoko clear up their misunderstanding after school. After discovering that UV rays from sunlight cause Yoko's skin to instantly tan, Nagisa decides to train her into dodging sunlight onto her route to and from school. Asahi studies up on vampire weaknesses, while Nagisa encourages Yoko to do a field test with her new training. On the way, they walk through a shopping arcade where Asahi tries to protect Yoko from a salesman offering garlic and crosses. However, like sunlight, their effects on Yoko are much less harmful than their depictions in popular fiction. Crosses simply make her annoyed and garlic makes her eyes water. After coming across an uncovered bridge, Yoko is about to give up her new daytime route when Asahi asks if she's tried using sunscreen. Yoko ends up using it for the first time the next day at school. The following weekend, Asahi and Yoko go to an amusement park together. Yoko saw it as a chance to get him closer to Nagisa, but Nagisa declined, seeing it as an opportunity to have Yoko go on a date with Asahi. The two of them go through the attractions, including a haunted house where Yoko is scared at first but becomes upset at the actor portraying a blood-sucking vampire. Later that evening, Yoko notes that their outing was similar to the relationship that her own parents had with each other, to the point where they even attended her current school together. Meanwhile, Yoko's father is suspicious of Yoko's new boyfriend and tasks the werewolf Shido Shinshido with bringing her back home if her secret has been revealed. 
While returning home from the amusement park, Asahi and Yoko encounter a scary wolfman with fangs. Yoko recognizes him as her childhood friend, Shido, but he threatens Asahi anyway. When Shido sees the moon in the evening sky, he ends up transforming into a sexy lady named Shiho. The three then go to Yoko's home, where Shiho explains that she is the dominant personality in the body she shares with Shido. Shiho then starts teasing Asahi, making Yoko jealous as she reveals that the wolfman can change at any depiction of the moon, including a picture that she shows to Shiho. Meanwhile, Nagasi heads to Yoko's home to make a peace offering with her homemade cake, but upon arriving finds Shiho pinning down Asahi and leaves. When she returns a moment later, she sees Shido in the same position and flees at the sight. Eventually, the girls clear up the misunderstanding, while Shiho tells Yoko in a private moment that she would be more honest about her relationship with Nagisa. The next day, Shiho appears in Nagisa's class as a transfer student, introducing herself as a pervert. After being relentlessly teased by Shiho's body in school, Asahi begins the projectile nosebleed while Nagisa starts to get jealous. Asahi runs away to meet with Yoko when the two see a tiny girl with horns walking by them. Soon, Yoko decides to speak directly with the girl, who tells Yoko that she's Akane Komoto, related to their homeroom teacher. Akari the teacher then shows up to wrangle Akane back to her office, where Asahi and Yoko learn that Akane is actually a thousand-year-old devil with real horns and Akari's great-great-grandmother. Akane also claims that it was thanks to her that the various supernatural creatures were allowed to transfer into the same class. Despite Akane's attempts to portray himself as an adult, Yuko keeps baiting her into childish reactions with snacks and claims to be the more mature girl. The two then decide to have a sexy contest in the empty school gym, with Shiho acting as the judge while Nagisa starts tracking mysterious demonic energy from her cat-like spacecraft elsewhere in the city. In multiple contests, Yoko and Akane try to one-up each other to prove their sexiness, except Shiho keeps getting the strongest reaction from Asahi. Finally, Yuko challenges Akane to survive by eating awful cream puffs that Mikan made earlier. The contest ends with Yuko and Akane blowing up the gym in a large explosion and sending Nagasi's spacecraft flying from the shockwave. Also, he finds out that he has to retake a cooking class having missed the previous one. He's delighted to find out that Yuko, Nagisa, and Shiho are joining him in making curry, but soon finds out that all three girls have trouble making it. Nagasi's directions lead her to make a chocolate cake, which is accidentally tossed out a nearby window where Akane catches it with her horn. After taking a bite, she falls in love with it. Mikan decides to buy Akane lots of snacks in hopes of getting an interview with her, but Akane slips away until Akari appears to wrangle her back in to the home economics room. However, both women are sickened to find out that Yuko and Nagisa got too enthusiastic and added something to the curry that causes it to spew poison gas. Later that night, Akane breaks down the wall of Akari's apartment and demands that she get Nagisa to make more chocolate for her. When Akari refuses, Akane responds by magically steering an asteroid towards Earth, threatening to destroy the planet. Yuko, Nagisa, and Shiho reunite to make chocolate in the same room, but Akari discovers the asteroid veers off course when Akane loses concentration. So she ties her down to a chair and force feeds her chocolates made by everyone except Nagisa. Even as Akane tries copying herself to reach Nagisa's chocolate, the other girls manage to fight Akane's clones off until she loses enough focus that Nagisa's comrades in outer space force the asteroid to make a U-turn, saving Earth from destruction. And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading lots of videos just like this, so I'll see you in the next one.